Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and today we're going to take a look at using auto tiling in Unity, which is a system which allows us to basically draw wherever we want, and the tile map system built into Unity will create these joined up tiles for us. So rather than just painting the same basic tile, we can create these and they'll match up and nicely arrange for us. So let's dive in to see how this works. So I've got a very basic uh, tile map set up here. So I've got one little tile set of just basic tiles. And normally what you would do to draw on your tile map would be to grab a particular tile, say there's a corner. Then when I want to go across the top, I draw like that and then match up each one. But obviously this can be very time consuming, trying to fill in each individual tile and match it up correctly. Even if you, for example, what I would do in this situation is draw like this and then go, okay, well, I need to put the top layer of lines along like this and so on and just keep repeating this kind of as we go. But that's not really very efficient. Instead, what is better to do is we can create a system using the auto tile system uh, to do this. Now, this isn't something that's built into Unity by default, but it is something that's provided by Unity themselves. Uh, but to access it, instead of being able to download it within Unity, what you can do is go into, if you go to Google and do a search for Unity 2D Extras, then on the Unity GitHub, you'll see this, you should see this will turn up as the first result, the Unity Technologies 2D Extras. So this is built by Unity themselves. And if you go here, you can go through the process here. It tells you here how to download and set it up and everything. But basically what you do is download this project file. So if you go to code and then uh, you can download the zip file here. Then once you have the zip file, you can just extract that. And then if you go to your project, wherever your project is stored. So I've got it on another window here. So if I go into my auto tiling here. The assets folder is normally where you would have anything in your game. So for example, if I go here, there's my assets folder there where I'm, that's where I'm storing my art and my tiles and things like that. But what you'll do instead is go into the packages folder and you'll create this folder com.unity.2d.tilemap.extras and you basically just copy everything from within this 2d extras master here. You just copy all of this and paste it into this folder. So this is just the exact same thing that we have in here. And then when you go back into Unity, obviously you can see I've already done it. So when you go back into Unity, in packages here, you'll now have down the bottom the 2D tile map extras folder. You should already have the 2D tile map folder in here in your 2D project. So now that we have the 2D tile map extras, we can do some more interesting things. So what this does to start off with is it creates some extra brushes. So there's a whole bunch of extra brushes that you can play around with by default in here. But what we're going to do is create something called a rule tile. Now, so if I go to my assets folder, I'm going to go to tiles here. I'm going to right click and create a 2D tiles and then rule tile. And I'm going to call this uh, the grass auto tile. And if I go to my inspector, we now have a few options that we have here. So let's set up a default sprite that we're going to use. So I'm going to go into my art folder. I've got my tiles here. I'm going to use the top left one as a default. So now you can see down the bottom, it creates this auto tile system or auto tile display, which is just at the moment four copies of that same tile. So we need to set up some rules for how it will understand what to do with this tile. So the first thing we're going to do is under tiling rules here, we're going to hit this little plus and we're going to say, this first one that should be in the top left, we can tell it what direction other tiles will be around it. So this top one shouldn't have anything above it. So if I click twice here, so when it's empty, if I click once, we, we have this saying, hey, there is something up above. But if I click twice, we're telling it there's nothing up above this tile. So there's nothing to the left of this tile. But then to the right of it, it should be connected to another tile. So we'll hit the hit it just once and we get a green arrow and the same down below. So now this tile will have something beside it. So I'm going to hit then the plus symbol and we're going to add the next tile in. So this tile will be on top. So again, it won't have anything above it, but it will have something to the left and right of it. And you'll see as soon as we do this down below here, we now have the top tile, top left tile is right. And here we have this top tile, which connects to that correctly. So then I'm going to hit this one here and we want to do the same. So this is not connected on top and right and is connected on left. So let's just quickly go through the ones we have here. So you basically go through each of these individual tiles 
and say which directions they won't have any connections. So this next one here is going to be a little bit more interesting because it will have connections on all four sides, but the bottom right corner is saying it's not connected in that direction. So because it has this kind of graphic of uh, looping around the corners. So I'm going to go through each of these and add them in. Uh, this, is, of course, isn't very uh, entertaining to watch, so I'm going to just fast forward through me doing this. Now, along the way, there will be a couple of tiles that repeat as you go, uh, and there's no need to duplicate those tiles or anything. It's just due to the nature of the way this tile set is set up, so you can ignore any duplicates that you find along the way. Uh, but if you do uh, actually use any duplicates, it won't make any difference. They'll, they'll still draw in perfectly fine. Okay, so with that done, we should have something that looks roughly like this. Uh, we've got a bunch of different tile set, tiles all set up here. Our grass auto tile, this section is working correctly. Now this other stuff is still repeating wrong, but we'll deal with that in a little bit. We're just going to look at setting up these uh, basic ones for just now. Uh, so with this done, what we can then do is add this new rule tile that we set up into our tile palette. So I'm going to go to my tile palette here. I've got this basic one set up here and I'm going to go to my tiles and I'm going to drag this rule tile in here. So it'll create it as our little uh, just top left corner because our, that's our default sprite that we had set up. And then I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to remove all of these from our scene, first of all. And I'm going to select this tile and I'm going to use the block tool here just to make it easy. And I'm going to drag this out and we should see when we release it, there we go, it fills in nice and simple. And we now have a much easier way to lay out our tiles, which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to do. It's nice and handy to use with the uh, rectangle tool as well to just drag and move these out. With our tile set that we set up, there is some limitations to it. However, for example, we can't do single tiles. So we can do a single tile up like that, but it doesn't quite know how to handle it. You can see this block here should have connections on both sides, but it doesn't have a connection on either side. Uh, I can actually see I've left, I've missed a tile at some point because this connection here isn't working correctly either. So there's a few errors here and that's simply because we didn't set up our rule tile with enough information. So really this amount of information isn't enough for us to use. You need to go into a little bit more depth, but obviously that's going to take a little bit more time, so it's not as fun to watch me sit through it. But included with the project file download at the start, or below this video, uh, there is a link to this project set up in the exact same way back at the start. And in here we have some expanded tiles. So if I click on this here, and back in the art folder, there's an expanded tile set. So if I just go to my inspector here, so actually I'll just double click on this. You can see this is a tile set with a lot more detail to it. So there's a lot more going on here. And in the tiles, I have created this expanded uh, grass tile set. Uh, so I'm going to drag this into our scene here. And I've also got a snow one, which I'll drag in and place this here. So with this one, I'm just going to use the drawing tool here and I can go over here and I can create any kind of connection that I want. You can see it'll fill it in correctly as we go. So no matter which way, which uh, setup of tiles we have, this will fill it in correctly. Uh, and to fill that in on the pre-existing one, if I just drop that in there like that, you can see because they're two different tiles, it creates this kind of um, tile within a tile kind of view. But what I can do is just grab my paint bucket tool and fill this in over the previous tile because although these tiles look different you should remember that they're all this rule tile here so now we're using this other rule tile they don't quite merge but if i fill this in now they're all this rule tile and now you can see it's filled everything in correctly and that's one of the handy things about using a rule tile like this is it's super easy to just replace them all using this flood tool so for example, again, I could grab the snow tile that I have set up and just fill that in. And there we go. We have a perfectly set up environment and it's really handy to just quickly change your entire tile set of your game. Uh, let's just quickly have a look at the grass expanded one that we have here. So a couple of things to really importantly note with this is that we have now been much more explicit. So instead of saying this green one just has tiles to the left 
top right and bottom. It also we also know that hey, it has to have a tile to the bottom left because we're not we don't have this little artifact here. So this little artifact represents that it's a corner. One other really important thing to note is if I scroll down here, any of these edge pieces. So for example, this one here has an edge. You'll notice that I've put it so that hey, we know there's nothing to the side of it, but we don't know in particular whether there'll be something to the top left or bottom left. And that's because, for example, over here, let's actually just switch this back to this tile set here. For example, we're looking at uh, a tile that has nothing to the left, but it is connected up and above. So, so that is, for example, this one here. So right now, this one doesn't know if there's something up here or not. But if I put this one in like that, then that doesn't affect this tile. It doesn't change how it represents itself within the world. It only really affects this one here. So it's important to note that although we know there's nothing to the left of it, it doesn't matter if there's something up above or down below. So that's why we leave it as the blank gray square. But apart from that, that's it. That's all the information you need. You can look at how these tiles are set up. You'll notice down in the view down here when we have it all filled out correctly like that, that the uh, auto view will look like it should down here. And using these auto rule tiles is really helpful. I use it the whole time in my games, especially in Scoot Kaboom, which you can see on the screen right now. I use it for the layouts of the whole game in lots of different areas. And there's lots of other cool things you can do with the 2D Extras pack. As I said, you can look at the uh, different brushes that come as part of it. You can also do cool things like create game object brushes so that when you draw something, it will spit in a certain game object into the world. It's really cool stuff. So I recommend playing around with it, taking a look at how it works. And I will, of course, be back soon with more tutorial goodness. Keep up the good work. Keep making cool things in Unity. And I'll see you all very soon.